Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this lecture, I am going to explain the third and the most advanced application domain of image analysis, that is pattern recognition. I am going to go with very basic stuff in this lecture, whereas in the following lecture, I'll jump on to some advanced techniques as well. The main objective of all pattern recognition approaches is to find any object present in an image, to identify it, and then to classify it as per some predetermined classes. Therefore, to achieve this objective, there are certain assumptions associated with it. That is, that image already contains some object and you already know that what kind of objects are going to appear in an image and what are different classes into which we can organize those objects. For example, if you want to clean up a messy room, how you proceed with it? You enter the room, you analyze the whole room, you then sweep the room from one side to the other, you pick up all the objects on the way. Whenever you pick up an object, you analyze it, you see your brain works that what is this object, where it should be placed or what is the best area or the best place where this object should be present. So based on the object which your brain has analyzed, you will place it somewhere where it belongs. Additionally, suppose an example of classifying squares and circles. For example, you have certain number of squares and certain number of circles with you and you want to classify them. So what you are going to do, you are going to come towards this first object, this one. You are going to see what this object is. Somehow you are going to know that this is a square and you should place it in the category of squares. Then you are going to come towards the next object, for example, this one. And somehow you are going to know that this one is a circle and you are going to place this object into the area or into the location reserved for circles. You are going to repeat this thing with all the objects present in the image. And at the end, what you are going to get you're going to get that all the squares would have been placed at one side and all the circles would have been placed at the other location. So you have classified all the objects present in the image. So this classification, this very simple classification required three major steps if you can recognize them. The first step was to isolate these objects. The first thing you need to do is you need to isolate these five objects present in this image. The second thing was you need to know somehow that what this object is. And to know that what this object is, you need to figure out or you need to extract some certain features from this object. These features will tell you that to which class this particular object belongs. For example, in this case, the features can be number of corners. So for this object, this object number one, you are going to extract number of corners and you are going to get a four. For the second object, you are going to get a zero. For this one, you are again going to get a four, a zero over here and a zero over here. So number of corners will tell you that what kind of shape you are looking at. But there are assumptions over here that only these two kind of shapes are present there is none other. So once you have figured out the features of all the objects, based on those features, you are going to somehow classify that certain objects having four corners are squares, whereas objects having zero corners will be classified as circles. So to formally put, the three components of pattern recognition process are an object isolation module. The second one is a feature extraction module and the last one is a classification module. An object isolation module, it operates on digital image and produces a representation of the object that can be further used in the feature extraction module. So a feature extraction module will then abstract the whole image and will convert the image into some numbers only or into a feature vector. For example, we want to distinguish two types of cars. One type is a normal passenger car, whereas the other one is a racing car. So what are the features of a passenger car? And what are the features of the racing car? 
we need to figure those out. Feature extraction module will extract those features from the provided images. The first feature we can use is, for example, number of doors. We know that mostly passenger cars have four number of doors, whereas racing cars have two number of doors. Working with only one feature is not a very good idea. So we need to have more than one feature. For example, the next one can be surface area. We know that passenger cars are normally large and bulky, whereas racing cars are quite slim. So passenger cars will have larger surface areas and racing cars will have lesser surface area. A third feature that I can think of right now is of height. We know that passenger cars they have larger height whereas racing cars have quite lesser height. So we have listed these three features over here and we know that using these three features we can distinguish a passenger car from a racing car very easily. This thing is called a feature vector. Now for every unknown object which we are going to encounter we are going to figure out these three things and after feature extraction module we will be left with these three things only our whole image will be represented or the whole object will be represented not by some image or some by some pixels but by these three numbers that is the number of doors its surface area and the height only so we have abstracted the whole image and we have used only three numbers to represent the whole object now the next step is of classification module that will use this feature vector and it will classify using some classification technique the object whether it is a passenger car or a racing car this classification is called labeling so we need to label the incoming object as a passenger car or a racing car object isolation module is nothing but segmentation by the name of it and by the examples which i have given you must already be figuring it out that we just need to segment out all the objects we need to figure that where one particular object is present and where is the other one once we have segmented out all the objects we can feed those segmented object to the feature or extraction module and that module will then extract all the required features from that object so the first step of the feature extraction module is to extract the features which are characteristics of that object that is those features should be able to extract or should be able to represent that object distinctively in the presence of number of objects this makes the selection of features an extremely important task because after feature extraction module you are only going to be left with numbers all the objects present in the image are going to be abstracted using some numbers only so if you are not extracting useful features then you are losing the data for example in the case of distinguishing a passenger car from a racing car we cannot use number of tires as a feature because if you have extracted number of tires from both of the objects for example from the race, uh, racing car and from the passenger car then this number is not going to tell you or it, it is not going to give you any useful information for classifying passenger car and racing car because both cars have four tires therefore features should be selected very carefully because the classification is going to depend only on the features you, which you have extracted in the feature extraction module and if you have extracted some useless features then you won't be able to classify the objects so to proceed a number of reasonable potential features are extracted they are tested and then they are finalized so that they can be used in some actual application so while selecting features for feature extraction module there are certain guidelines that should be kept in mind the first one is that a feature should be an independent one that is a change in one feature should not change the value of another feature in significantly because if changing one feature is affecting some other feature as well then you don't need that other feature then these features are dependent and the other feature is not giving you any considerable or useful information so that will only load your system of classification later on the second thing is 
that features should be discriminatory. Each feature should have a significantly different value for each different object. For example, in the case of passenger car and racing car, if we are using the feature of height, we know that height is quite different for passenger car and for racing car. If height is similar for both type of cars, then this feature might not be useful for classification of these two type of cars. The last characteristic of the features that we are going to extract is that the features should be reliable. That is, features should have the same value for all the objects in the same class. So, for example, if you are looking for passenger cars and racing cars, then if you are using, for example, height feature, then this height should be similar in all type of passenger cars. And it should have some other lower value maybe for all type of racing cars. So if we make sure that our features are independent, discriminatory and reliable, then it would be quite easy for classification module to classify the objects later on. Additionally, it is evident that the computational complexity of the pattern recognition technique depends very much on the number of features. So if we have large number of features, then we need to compare those large number of features with all the features that are stored in our database. And it, will be, it would be quite difficult for the classification module to classify the object. So the lower number of features will ease the computational load on the classification module, but they will make it difficult for it to classify the object. Whereas a high number of features will impose a computational load on the classification module, but it might be quite easy for the classification module to distinguish two objects. Therefore, we need to optimize the number of features that we can use to classify objects. In an industrial setup, objects can be recognized based on features that are somehow linked to their size or their shape. So one obvious size-based feature is area. So area is nothing but the number of pixels comprising the object multiplied by the area of a single pixel. For example, if we take the area of a single pixel as a unit area, then the number of pixels will directly represent the area of the object. For example, this object will have a smaller area, whereas this object is going to have a larger area. A modified version of area, which is sometimes used, is called integrated optical density, and it is equivalent to area multiplied by the average gray level of the object. It also represents the weight of the object. Additionally, we can also use length and width of an object to describe its size. But while using length and width as feature of an object, one must be aware that these features are not orientation independent. That is, if you change the orientation, length can be changed into width and width can be changed into length. So to figure out the length and width of any object, we are going to use minimum bounding rectangle. What is a minimum bounding rectangle? For example, if you have this kind of shape, then the minimum bounding rectangle would be a rectangle of minimum area that can bound this object like this. So this would be the minimum bounding rectangle for this object. The length and width of minimum bounding rectangle will be used as the length and width of the object. Another simple feature that can be used is the perimeter of the object. The extraction of perimeter is quite simple and is quite helpful for distinguishing objects specifically in an in industrial setup. But this perimeter is quite dependent on the type of segmentation technique that has been used before the feature extraction module. Because the segmentation accuracy is going to directly affect the perimeter of an object. For example, if there is an object like this, and it has been segmented quite perfectly but there is a certain hole present after the segmentation over here then the perimeter of this object would be the sum of these lengths and also the perimeter of this hole as well till now we have discussed some simple features that were representing the size of the object but how about some features that can encode the shape of an object Two very popular features are called rectangularity and circularity. 
by the name it suggests that rectangularity will have a larger value for rectangular objects and circularity will have larger values for circular objects. So what is rectangularity? Rectangularity is the ratio of the area of the object to the area of the minimum bounding rectangle. For example, if you have a rectangular object, no matter what is the size of that object, the minimum bounding rectangle would have the same shape. So the rectangularity is going to be near to one. For example, the area of this object will be very much equal to the area of the minimum bounding rectangle and you are going to get a 1 for rectangularity measure. Whereas if you have a circular object like this, then the minimum bounding rectangle would have some shape like this. In this case, the area of the object would be pi d square by 4, whereas the area of the minimum bounding rectangle would be d square because the size of the rectangle is d by d. So you are going to get a pi by 4 for circular objects. And if this object becomes thin and curvy, for example, there is an object like this, then the minimum bounding rectangle would be like this one. Now the area of the minimum bounding rectangle has increased quite a lot, whereas the area of the object is quite small. So you are going to get values lesser than pi by 4 even. So these values are going to tend towards 0. So all the objects having rectangular shape, they are going to have rectangularity measure equal to or near to 1, whereas objects having thin curvy shapes, they are going to have rectangularity measure approaching 0. Another feature that can encode this rectangularity is called aspect ratio. An aspect ratio is simply the ratio of the width of the minimum bounding rectangle to its length. For example, a square will have an aspect ratio of 1. A circle will also have an aspect ratio of 1, whereas a rectangle will have an aspect ratio different than 1. And same will be the case for an ellipse or an oval. To encode the circularity of some object, there are number of circularity measures available that are used in practice but the most commonly used circularity measure is the ratio of the area to the square of the perimeter length. For example, if you have a circle like this, the area of this circle would be pi r square whereas the square of the perimeter would be 4 pi square r square and if you simplify it, you will be left with 1 by 4 pi. So this is the value of this particular circularity measure for pure circle. If the shape deviates from this pure circle, the value will drop. So this kind of circularity measure, it assumes maximum value for disks and tend towards zero for irregular shapes with a ragged boundary. For example, a shape like this. Because this shape would have a certain area that might be similar to this circle, but it has a much larger perimeter. So the measure of circularity is going to drop. So once you have figured out the required features that can distinguish the objects and you have jotted those features down into a feature vector, the last step is of classification module. You are going to feed that feature vector to this classification module and using some classification technique that I'll discuss in the preceding lectures, the classification module will classify the object into some predetermined classes. To understand this idea, if one view the feature values as coordinates of a point in an n-dimensional feature space, for example, we have used two features to classify certain objects, for example, we have used rectangularity and circularity to classify some rectangles and some circles like this. Then if you plot the features of all the objects in this space, then for certain object features are going to lie somewhere over here. Whereas for certain circular objects, features are going to lie somewhere over here. So the job of the classification module is to find out this boundary that will distinguish between these two classes. And if some unknown object falls over here, then it would be termed as a rectangular object, whereas if something 
falls in this category, it will be termed as a circular object. 